I think of you and you, you, you talk like a Premier League chairman. I've got to be honest. Sure. You talk like a Premier League owner. I wish but, I had their money. But Peterborough United <laughs> is a club you love. It's your sure. club. Uh, and it's an EFL club. Is the gap getting bigger, though, between oh, yeah. the Premier League and the EFL? Oh, yeah. Day by day by day, week by yeah. week. Every every day, every season, it is getting bigger. It's getting more difficult. It's um, and, and, and I'm not sitting here like some of the other EFL owners who, who you know, moan and whinge and whatever else about what we don't have. Um, there are lots of things I'd like to fix in the game, and it's not just about wanting more money off our overlords. It, it's about things like the loan system how it's wrong. You know, we get charged and we pay for accommodation and we pay this and we pay that. Simple little things. If we sat around a table, we could fix loads of things with the help of the Premier League. Yeah. And there are clubs in the Premier League we work with. Like, we work with Man City and they are brilliant to work with. First club I've found in years to work with on loans. It's not about money. It's not about accommodation. It's not about the player playing. They are fantastic to work with. And we, we what, feel... They genuinely want to help you. Absolutely. They gave us a pl player this year. We'll have probably a couple next year. We, we, we forged a relationship with their 21s, their academy, and we just found them a breath of fresh air as opposed to other clubs who it's just all about money, money, money. And, and, you know, that's not what it's about when you loan young players out. You want them to play. You want them to progress. And you want to make sure the club who's helping you do that, i.e. a League One club, you're not cutting them off the knees, making them pay full wages, making them pay till the end of June all the wages, all those things. Yeah. And we've had that happen to us. So... Then the TV, the, the deal, the money, and lots of owners in the well, FL. The redistribution deal still remains it, to be it, done, no doubt. It needs to be resolved. We Clubs need to... like Peterborough still wait to yep. find out what they're going to get from the Premier League. It should have been closed that already. That other people that should, it's not done. I agree. It should have been done. And we should have gotten a room, not come out of the room until a deal was struck. And that's gone on too long. And the longer it goes on, the worse it gets and the more power they feel they'll have. But I'm not of that type that's going to sit here and criticise all the Premier League owners. Because that's not going to help us get a deal. Well... He's a man you know, and, and I know him, the Charlton co-owner, mm -hmm. one time at Sunderland, Charlie Methon. And, and he was talking about the Premier League and the lack of the deal and who needs to do what. I would say, I'd just ask them to grow up and remember that these clubs, the clubs that they run, were very recently Football League club members. And the fact that in the game of musical chairs, they're currently sat in the seats where they're currently sat doesn't mean that at some point their clubs won't be back in the Football League and in a position where an equitable distribution of English football's total revenues would actually be an extremely welcome thing to them. I mean, he's not wrong, is he? Some of these Premier League individuals must realise, or it could be us in the EFL soon. Of course. 100%. So, so Charlie Methon's not I, wrong I, there. I don't disagree with his, his, the, what he's saying. But you looked at the heavens as because, soon as you heard no, his voice. But, yeah, that's just about him. But, you know, Palace, Palace obviously, you know, been in the EFL. Forest have been in the EFL. Some of those clubs, Bournemouth, obviously, were the one that strikes you the most because of the size of Bournemouth and the fan base and the, the romantic story of going from nearly out of business to the Premier League and now don't want to maybe do a deal. But I think you tell people things like that message there, they don't want to listen to you. The minute you start not insulting them, but, you know, preaching to them, they're going to shut up their ears. So we need to sit in rooms together with a respect across from each other and go, look, this is happening whether you like it or not. This is going to happen now. The government are intervening. So why don't we do this where it works for everybody? The Premier League have come out and said, we don't want to do this because we think you'll spend all the money on players and agents. I agree. So there's strike one. So, so let's you, put in the deal. No, let's put in the deal. Any money we get, it goes towards facilities. It goes towards our training facilities. It goes towards our academy. Yeah. It goes towards reducing debt. It goes towards doing all the things that will help our football clubs in the EFL. Instead of, because that will protect us from them having to give our players play rises. And having to pay agents more money. Because the, the agents, the players, I go, you got an extra million quid, an extra 1.5, you can give my player six grand a week now instead of four. Sorry, part of the deal we signed was we can't allocate that money to player so you, wages. you would give an assurance that any money that came to 100%, you from the Premier League 100%. would not go to player wages Absolutely. or agents. It would go to infrastructure. It would go to improving everything about the football club, the things we all need to do. Lots of our clubs, 50, 60% of them, have horrible pitches, horrible facilities, bad training facilities, have got too much debt. These are all the things we can improve with that extra bit of funding. Right. And that will help our infrastructure and maybe potentially allow us to reduce the price of our tickets. You see, I mean, Dara, you're talking sense and I get it. Of course. Um, the fact that is everybody, happen occasionally. everybody's got an idea on mm. why this hasn't happened, on why the Premier League haven't agreed with the, the, the clubs down the pyramid sure. as to what they're going to get and when they're going to get it. Even the man Jordan chipped in. The Football League has run itself poorly for a variety of reasons over a significant period of time. 
um, and it's allowed the Premier League to disappear into the ether, do what it wants, and now it wants to bring it back into check. And it can't because it's got no leverage. It's got a moment of leverage, which is the independent regulator. So everyone's playing their hand the way they want to. And having sat in Football League meetings and listened to voices like Charlie Meffin that think that, that by shouting out dissent, and once upon a time I was one of them, because it had incompetent leadership. The Football League was run by incompetence. It's not run by incompetence now. It's run by capable operators that are most likely to deliver an outcome. Now, what you don't need is dissenting, self-motivated, further down a pyramid voices, suggesting that there's a better way to do it than allowing Parry to finish the negotiation. They don't want to give any money. Don't want to give any money, says Simon. So he's not, he's not wrong there. And, and of course, nobody ever wants to give up more money. But they all know it's coming. Um, but look, it's been a couple of decades since Simon's been in one of those EFL meetings. So let me talk about the present instead of the past. Um, we've got some good leadership at the EFL. We've got some really good people. Yeah, and to I've, be fair, he was saying that. I, I've had my own, he, he was. I've had my own rooks with the people at the EFL over the last couple of years. There's, there's lots of things I'd like to improve. I love the NFL system with the 32 owners sitting in a room and basically strike deals and get deals done and then they have a commissioner. And lots of those owners are involved on media deals. So you've got at the moment people in the EFL do our media deals, do negotiating for us. You've got successful owners who've managed to buy football clubs who are worth billions and millions, and very few of them are involved in any negotiation. Some of these people are the best negotiators in the world. I at some point called myself in my 20s and 30s the best closer in the world, because that's what I did for a living. Close deals. Absolutely. Yeah. But I've never been involved or invited to, to help. I would do it on my own free will. I'd pay my own flight fare. Yeah, use us. But that's the, the only is, thing I'd say. The, the, use the us. The clubs in the EFL, you're not all one voice, are you? No, and that's a bigger problem. Because well, that's, when we, well, when we have annual meetings, when we have annual meetings, it's always CEOs who always go to those things. We need owners' meetings. I don't care if you get half the owners in a room, the other half are on Zoom. I don't care if some of them are faceless, but behind a blank screen. We need all the owners because they're the decision makers. When you get people who are in a room who have to go running back to daddy and mommy to get decisions, things can't get done fast enough. Let me ask you a straight one. If you're sitting here today with me and you're a <coughs> Premier League owner, sure. would you want to chip in yes. for a club like Peterborough United? Absolutely. Absolutely, because I know, having living in America, dealing with the MLS and where they get it all wrong, because they don't have a pyramid and they don't appreciate what's below them, and that's why they don't have the TV deals that we have over here. I know everything about our institution, our industry, which I've called a trillion dollar industry, is built on the pyramid. It's built on the success of, you know, the Lutons of the world and all the eyes that get brought in there. Why do you think some Americans run along and buy and spend millions of pounds on a club and non-league? The romance of the game. Mm. I know what we're worth. I also know what we've done for players who've come out into the EFL and have been born in the EFL and gone on to play for England. I know what we do for the Premier League. I appreciate all the honours in the Premier League don't want to give up any more money. They don't want to give some crumbs off the table. Right. But respectfully, they're going to have to. And the word compromise is going to have to be used. So just to recap... So let's stop you, insulting them. Yeah. And let's try and sit down like men and, and grown men and women. You didn't like and Charlie do... Meth and saying, grew up. No, no you didn't but Char like that. Charlie's a new owner. I think he's a minority owner of Charlton or whatever else. You know, I want majority owners sitting at tables doing deals. And you give a cast iron assurance that any money that came from the Premier League in an agreement wouldn't go to players' wages or to agents me, in the EFL. One million percent, that's me personally. I would okay. try and convince every owner that's in the... When you see clubs in the EFL who are posting accounts with 80 and 90 million quid losses, I think the last thing they need to be doing is writing new contracts and paying agents more money. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.